Are there any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have another question that came up on YouTube. That was from an Angel H. Uh, she was asking, uh, what is artificial intelligence exactly? Please tell us what you know about this. Does plasma science, what does plasma science have to do with artificial intelligence? And does artificial intelligence have souls? Even Mr. Kesh is asking what is artificial intelligence? <laughs> if it has intelligence, it can't be artificial. If it has well, intelligence. The thing is, the thing it is, that it, this is just, it's just come up recently that they have this robot in Saudi Arabia that's very intelligent, hooked up to the internet and so on. And it, they just made it a citizen of Saudi Arabia. It's the first uh, artificial that, intelligence. That the level of their intelligence, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it may reflect <laughs> on that, yes. But the fact is... You don't need that, much intelligence to, to well, do that. <laughs> they're smart businessmen because what they did was they made the artificial intelligence a citizen. Therefore, it has to... Uh, it can have an income and therefore it has to pay taxes on that income and not only that but it will have an amazing huge income that may actually exceed the whole income of the country um, in a very rapid way because of its interconnection with all the other artificial intelligence of the world and so on and it gets to a point where humans all the humans of the planet could not even keep up with one of their email messages back and forth because there's so much information that they're exchanging. So it's sort of a getting a, a bit out of hand, some people say. Yes, but, I but, know about this. I heard about this. But, so the main question is, would that entity, does it have a soul? Do, does a, a, a computer network... Uh, as such, have a soul. Can, I, can, can we become... Shared knowledge can, would be better. Can we... What I said when I heard this one initially, you heard about the global warming? It doesn't exist. It doesn't <laughs> exist, does it? Because it was a brainchild of a Dutchman who wanted to make money and he, he saw it good. The Saudis pay money for anything, so they can buy as much as they like, and they can promote it, not to show how how things are. But in so many ways, I heard about it. It's very much in control. It can do a lot of things. So we made a robot for us to become uh, cleverer than us, and um, it's just a sequence of numbers, yes or no, yes or no, and logical. It's still programmed by somebody. Somebody still has to program it to do something. It... Yes, yes, apparently, uh, the, the, just because somebody pays for something doesn't mean it's worth what they're paying for. If somebody could take them for a ride, so it's quite welcome. Uh, but uh, we've seen the number of these past years coming into market. But this is another way, they, as they say, is a cover-up for a uh, new scam on a banking fraud level of much higher without finance, without full backing. It's very much Bitcoin business, a new version of it under different cover. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of what this artificial intelligence will be involved with is um, various transactions with Bitcoin and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, I'm quite aware of this. This is well made and uh, in a way um, is becoming the replacement they are looking for to find a replacement for the oil revenues which are going and um, uh, they, they have lost huge amounts of oil revenue and uh, you will see a lot of these clever moves by, uh, by a number of nations who have lost money in, the, in oil revenue and this is one of the it is very, very interesting. I don't want to speak about it because I'm quite aware of what's happening in the background. Uh, but this is another fraud. It's a very large scale fraud which has started going on. And a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money and Saudis have that kind of money to lose. As we had, Bitcoin now is about 8,000. 
this, but, and it doesn't exist. Uh, the reason I keep an eye on this is the fact that um, uh, the way we are structuring the Keshe Foundation, we have to make sure the banking of the Keshe Foundation does not come near anywhere these things at this moment of time, the way we see it. It's, uh, it doesn't have a soul, as was said, is well programmed, is one of the top programmers in the world. He just come up with it and he has sold it. And as you know, um, this, the, the Middle East uh, Gulf was they, they paid five or 10 million to Michael Jackson. And at the end, they caused him, actually, actually they caused his death, trying to pay back the money which he borrowed from them. Uh, so it's the same category of large scale fraud, but just because the nation has paid for it does not mean it's going to work, but they're trying to push it to destabilize a lot of things which they have lost. And um, there is the, 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 he, the man who's made it one of the top programmers in the world. Uh, but um, it's extremely interesting how they have managed to do this. But they, they bought it, and doesn't mean that study is going to work. But it hasn't got any soul because it's a program made by one man and is being paid billions to do this program because they're hoping to make a lot of billions out of it. He actually has been decoded in the past few days, last past week. This program has been decoded and it's got a lot of flaws into it apparently. are trying to stop the people who found the flaw in it, not to show that they made a mistake. That bad it is, that's how we know. And it's got no soul, it's just a program. If, if, you, if the computer games you play has a soul, so does this, 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 uh, this number. <laughs> this, 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 this thing. You remember a few years ago, a girl came in a computer game, and what was his name? A lot of people, Made a lot of games came with her and everything else. Japanese? No, 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 no. What was it? What was her name? She had a name. It was a computer girl. Uh, it's the same kind of program. They, they are trying to direct massive losses. There are massive losses. You do got to realize that why Saudi Arabia is getting involved in these kind of things is that they have invested, they receive huge amount of money in oil, and they advanced purchase things at the rate of $100, $120 a barrel. And not all those promissory notes, advanced payments at the oil of $30, $40, $50 has come to be paid in the next few months and years. So there are two choices left. One is to start a war, that by scale of the war, that they can push the price to $200, $250, $100 plus, that they can meet the promissory notes they made. Um, they, um, the, on the other hand, um, they, they have made, and nobody lost as much as this nation in the, the stock market crash. They were investing heavily and they lost heavily. So there'll be new gimmicks coming up, trying to recover the more lost money. And this is one of them. We are monitoring this very closely. Now we do not get involved or anybody involved with these things comes into the work of the foundation as we're setting up a new banking system. And this is all what we see, the war between Iran and our Saudi, which is boiling up is literally in the background for those who invested in oil, $120, $140, hoping it goes to $160, and it crashed to $2025. They're trying to recuperate any cost. Calling a war will push the oil prices up, making these kind of uh, purchases of what I call dummies um, to create a condition that they can recuperate the losses. You got to realize if a normal American citizen lost so much in the stock on their houses, and you can imagine uh, how much these nations lost who bought all the stocks which are all the place. The biggest losers in the crash, these, these multi 
national national organization all all in these years. Saudi lost more than anybody else, and this intimidation, this war mongering is just to push the prices back about hundred that they can make the, what we call the block exchange payments. And it's the same with, uh, with the United States. A lot of American government businesses are pushing for this because they invested, the United Kingdom invested for the oil in the Gulf of Mexico. We still control more than 100 percent of it in the rates of $100, $130. And now the bills are beginning more needs to be paid because they three spend the money. This is the problem. And they will say that way. So uh, this is one of the strength of us. We see it, and this is part of negotiation. We understand the weaknesses on both sides. Uh, we we'll try to become very, very public about that. Everybody understands why and the reason. And there is no need because, as we talk, if the push comes to the shelf, we release against the war. The what we call PPW, PPUs, plasma power unit generators, we crush oil. So if the war starts, we release the power generators. Then what they were hoping to create was to create $200, $200, $180 per barrel to cover the losses, or it become worthless. Now you understand we, we are discussing from point of the strength, not the weakness. We have we become one of the most powerful scientific organizations with the muscle of peace. And we understand and we're standing by. But if oil prices become a point of war, Cash Foundation will release the PPWs with PPUs, which is a plasma power unit, 100 kilowatts into the market rapidly to crush the oil prices which might be produced. We are a power to be recognized and we deliver accordingly. But we stay loyal to the promises we're giving to the Chinese government. We will not interfere in that kind. We're looking for negotiation of peace. And we are aware why these moves made and why people buy and give certification to dummies to recover from the losses they made. I think I've made this very clever and very clear to those who thought. And thank you very much for this question. I wanted to raise it, but you brought it in, so my soul knew you were coming. Uh, <clears throat> this is Boniface. I have a question, Mr. Cash. I'm not supposed to be on Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you brought it up, so if you don't mind, I'd like to ask. You, you said something about global warming does not exist. And uh, I'm just curious to see uh, how you explain it from your perspective to uh, people that are curious about it. Global warming is started by a Dutch guy who came up with it and he managed to sell it like the guy saw this uh, guy as it's not the Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we see changes of weather is natural, is normal. And secondly, we are, we are closing to the sun. So we will have warming. It creates us to evolve. And if you travel, let's say north of Italy, into you know, other European countries, as you're passing through these mountains, just have a look. The cut in the mountains comes from glaciers, which melted millions of years ago and created these corridors, and you see most of the major cities on them in your Northern Europe. Was that a global warming? Who was burning the fuel at that time? <laughs> At that time, millions of years ago, nobody was burning any engines or whatever. Uh, so this is the terminology which um, we have to understand is a process. We go through cycles of melting because it's a, it's a balance of the fields on this planet. So whoever bought the global warming and sold a lot of trees to be grown, to be what you call planted in uh, what do you call it, different countries for it to be changed. It was a very good sale, but 
We would like to employ the research foundation to sell some material for us. Uh, but this is what, um, what is the reality about global warming. The more CO2, the more we put in the air, the more it's beneficial for human being at this point of time. Uh, if you understand the cycle. <clears throat> As you remember, last year announced that we will see earthquakes of massive water. And now we see scientists, international scientists have backed it in the last few 10 days that there will be a massive earthquakes in 2018, they reckon, and it will affect 1 billion people apparently. So let's see what happens. These are the things we see. Global warming does not exist. And if we exist and you believe in it, the Cash Foundation supporters have the best tool. Use your backup system and the rest, reduce the fuel. That's the best way you can do. So global warming does not exist. I've, I've attended and always remember how quake this is because they even managed to get the American vice president to become the president of America, which was cheated out of it, to lose his job with it. I said it very recently, Mr. Al Gore, in a public presentation some time ago said that all the, the, the problem with the global warming is that we are losing all the penguins because the bears are eating them. There's not enough ice for both of them to live on. And some clever guy in a presentation said, excuse me, President of Mr. Agor, he was the head of the United Nations Global Warming, uh, what do you call it, uh, committee. He said the bears live in the North Pole and the penguin in the South Pole. They never meet. That's how fake global warming is. I can even sit on the same table to eat. Go back, go back now. You say, <clears throat> go back on something very interesting. Let's bring global warming in Saudi Arabia together. Go back in around 2000, 2010. <clears throat> somebody managed, somebody managed to sell icebergs which were floating in the South Pole to the Saudis to ship it all the way to the Saudi Arabia to get fresh water out of it. More or less by the time it got to Saudi Arabia, it was melted. There was not much left for them to pull. That's what the Saudis paid against the global warming. One of the very big icebergs, just go on the news and see. They pay for anything, and the global warming was a very good excuse to sell fresh water in the ocean to people. Actually, as, the, as it came out, I heard in one of the, what do you call it, private political meetings, they said somebody managed to sell sand to the Arabs. He saw the iceberg, which was melting, to go right into Saudi Arabia. By the time it got there, it became part of the ocean. There was nothing left for them to have fresh water. <laughs> and you know what, Mr. Cash, now the Emirates, they are buying water. Pardon? Now the Emirates, they are buying one iceberg. I have this information from Dubai. And they always do. Yeah. But uh, the global warming works is good. The thing is, the way, the way I understand it is that they distracted us with the CO2, which was actually just the marker gas for all the other toxic gases that were given off by the same exhaust uh, uh, around the world, the, the, mostly through the diesel and the dust industry and so on. And CO2 is just the harmless, relatively harmless marker gas, and it's something we breathe out as our normal breathing. And instead of uh, blaming the other toxic gases, which are responsible for 9 million deaths a year currently due to air pollution. That's just air pollution, not even the water pollution. You got so to... This is what they distracted us from, and they're responsible for those deaths.
Yeah, but are we are we bringing that CO2 to Mars as well? Are we bringing that CO2 to Jupiter, which is changing well, dramatically? That's, that's right. Mars There's is changing that. dramatically. So we are we responsible for that as well? Uh, I don't think so. No, it's not the CO2. No, but you got to understand. That. Sorry about that. Uh, but you got to understand that um, the the more uh, they create CO2, the better now is for the Cash Foundation supporters because you can produce it much cheaper and you can do much more with it. <laughs> so we become the rescuers of global warming and we need it. Please burn more because we are absorbing more. Where do you think all these CO2s you are producing coming from? So uh, it will be very good. Uh, we buy exhaust for producing everything else which goes with CO2. But uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, the, the global warming was a very good game and literally died without war. He lost the elections and he lost his position as the head of the United Nations global warming. So these are, these are ways they, they, they managed to get themselves into and they, they do their work. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ketch, for uh, sharing that. I had uh, heard a, a scientist give his uh, presentation or argument about the same thing, that this uh, global warming was a, a, a fraud, that it, wasn't, it didn't exist. What he did was he, act, he used actual data that had been, you know, documented for, for, for decades, actually further than that. And he went on to show that the data that was being used to support global warming was actually manipulated by, by NASA. <laughs> and since it was just a, a lone voice, and supposedly 99% of all scientists agree that there is global warming, he was just like one person in the wilderness, you know, saying that uh, that was not the case. And uh, I think I recorded it. I don't have it at the top of my head. Uh, but I was just curious to see how you would explain the same scenario. He used, you know, actual data, and he, he showed how the data was manipulated to, to back up that claim. No, it's not the data. We know it, we see it, and this is something known in the international arena. They made a lot of money out of it. A lot of trees were sold, which never grew. Uh, British Airways and the others, you could change your fuel, but what do you call it, or whatever and they came to it, to so against buying trees to replace, and everything else was done. But now, we welcome as much CO2 that you can produce, burn more fossil fuels if you create so much CO2, because now we need it because all the structures of the cash foundation come into operation. We need millions and trillions of gallons of it. Uh, so please, uh, we, we have to understand uh, if there is a global warming and there isn't so much increase in CO2, we need it because we found the solution for it. And um, on the other hand, those of you who are again not aware of oil industry, you got to understand, if you go back to the statistic, the pollution from all the cars driven around the world, air pollution, is a fraction of the pollution created by marine fuel on all the ships, tankers, oil tankers, all these containers which come to Europe, America, and the rest of the world. The oil industry never promotes this, but just stand on the port and have a look and see when a ship goes, big tankers, cargo ships, small cargo ships, the exhaust coming out of it is the most dirtiest worthless part of the oil industry they have to get rid of is known as a marine oil and then the pollution of that is so horrendous that the first thing we're going to ban and reduce 
is a marine, or what you call it, reduce the number of the tankers, super tankers, and the ships and everything else on the high seas. Because we don't see them, nobody talks about them. I well, that's abs absolutely. I'll give you one statistic on that because I follow that. The ship that brings the cars from Japan to North America puts out more pollution than all the cars on the ship will for their entire lifetime. Good morning. <laughs> Just in that one shipment, that ship will put out that much pollution. Nobody knows. We, we always said this is part of being in the oil industry. We looked at a lot of things, what we put out, when they might hit us. Nobody speaks about it. The safest uh, way to do these huge shipments will be what you call nuclear reactor uh, powered uh, generators for the high seas, which has a different danger. But the marine oil is the most polluting element in the world. And nobody talks about it because nobody sees it when it's on the high sea. It's just about to be talked about now. <clears throat> the United Nations, for the first time, believe it or not, has brought together a, a panel or a, a group about pollution. They haven't addressed pollution somehow. In, in spite of nine, according to their own statistics, nine million people die from it every year, but they refuse to address it. Instead, it's all been about global warming and CO2 and CO2 and CO2. And this is, I think, the greatest tra tragedy and travesty of the entire 20th and now 21st century. This is so ridiculous that it's beyond ridiculous. There's more people killed every year from air pollution than in the Holocaust. Or in the, uh, if you add up in the last decade, more people have died from air pollution than the entire First World War and Second World War put together. Good morning. I get a little excited about that topic. <laughs> it's good. I used to get excited because many times uh, this is what, um, what is the reality. This is the fact about uh, but what they say, what you don't see, you don't miss. And, uh, and we don't see these huge tankers and the amount of poison they put out. The worst, lowest grade, when we cannot refine in a way to get whatever out of it is and we want to leave all what we call the rubbish at the end of it, we call it the marine oil. And it's literally scraping the bottom of the pit with it, and that's it. And not no many people, not many people know about this this huge disaster which is created. And much of it is poisonous, extremely poisonous, extremely poisonous. The the oil industry has done so much research on this, but it's all hidden. That's true also of the uh, railway trains. Uh, they are allowed up to uh, 5,000 times as much of the toxic uh, ingredients as in normal fuel for a diesel truck. So yeah, but... Uh, sorry, more. carry on. Go ahead. Carry on, carry on. Um, well, I'll, the, well, you're absolutely true about the, the larger... Uh, you know, what we call super tankers, and we don't see them normally, but we do see, for example, the um, cruise ships, which come in to, I live next to a port, and it's a big issue. The cruise ships come in and idle there, and it pollutes entire neighborhoods, and the people are complaining that they, you know, get headaches when they wake up and this kind of thing. And uh, so there is a push now, though, to um, actually uh, stop the diesel engines when they're in port and they hook them up to electricity and try to, uh, you know, uh, stop that idling when that happens. But also there's other pushes that are happening. There are signs of light in this situation. Uh, the Tesla car company, uh, Tesla Motors, 
just uh, unveiled their new semi truck. It's actually called semi, and um, it is all electric. And yes. Can I can I stop you there? Yeah. I'm, I'm because you just put your finger on it, and if I don't say anything, then I have to get up and go. <laughs> and this is impossible for me. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna you push the wrong button there, Rick. Um, can somebody tell me? Can anyone tell me? I'm a very ignorant scientist. I don't understand about anything at all. Um, why electricity is more expensive than if you burn warm gas or wood at home to generate heat? Why don't we all use electric heaters at home instead of using gas burners or oil burners as a central heating? Because well, it's very expensive. Because it has to be, somebody has to burn that oil somewhere else that we don't see. And then most of it and some of it is lost on transmission to come to you to charge a battery that some of it gets lost to the atmosphere or whatever system for you to run an engine in your bike or in your car. Tesla well, cars that, that are the happen. biggest, biggest, no, biggest no, criminals. No, Mr. Cash, the program with the new semi trucks are all powered by the sun. There's no fuel involved. No, I'm talking yeah. about charging systems. No, no. I'm talking about the charging system of the truck. They plug in to charge it, but they have a huge solar farm that feeds into the charging network for to charge the actual charger. The only no, 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 no. Wait, I don't agree because I was in a factory very recently, and I was sitting with the guy who makes these uh, charging machines that you can use on the side road. The no, I'm not talking about the truck. I'm talking about the electric cars. The electric right. cars, which are in the market, instead of you burning the fuel in the tank, they are burning the fuel at the central station somewhere to put the electricity on the grid, which they have to burn more than what you use to be able to get you moving. In fact, all it is is another gimmick like global warming electrical cars. Well, except the Tesla company also includes, they also have the largest solar panel uh, company in the world. The, the yes, CEO. but how much, how much, ask a question. You know, the, this is something we are looking into, this is something I've looked a long time. Uh, Tesla talks about electric cars. They are trying to put the batteries and the other biggest problem, which is nobody's talking about, and now it's going to come up, hit us worse. Where are these batteries which get recharged and become redundant going to be used? What are we going to do with these old batteries? We're going to dump it in the third world nations, and we don't talk about it. It has already started. It's been happening for a long time with phones too. These. All these Tesla, Tesla, is this 6,000 well, batteries they have? Where are these batteries going to go? Well, what, what about the, uh, the huge mining pits in China and elsewhere where they're mining this lithium in this rare earth? Yeah, I, that, that's, that's the real. I'm we're talking about the pollution. Yeah? Well, the pollution so the, the electricity, no, the electricity. The batteries last pretty much the life of the cars, the thing about it. No, they don't. You don't have to change them. At the end of the year, it has a car life, how much? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? Well, eventually they'll be, they, what, but they take them apart and recycle them, so far as I know. It's not a, uh, a, a, what can you recycle? How much of it's got recycled? And there's also other yeah. car manufacturers than Tesla as well that don't. Okay, fine. Listen, Tesla, we're going we're gonna to have cornered you, Rick. We have cornered you, Rick. We're not letting you go. I'll tell you why I get upset. I damn near died this summer from air pollution from my own damn car. It started to just <laughs> really bad. 
on the road and I tried to fix it over and over. I got bad parts from the internet and I kept trying to fix it. And I damn <laughs> car. I got some of my own car. Now, if it was an electric car, I wouldn't have that problem. If the electric cars were in front of me, I wouldn't have the problem of getting sick every single day when I go into town. I wouldn't have the problem of diesel trucks blasting their stuff in the faces of kids, kids getting cancer and so on. So we because put it in the air, they, if we mix it, you get directly, but we mix it in the air, the rest of the world population gets it, but you don't see it, but we receive it. No, the we, thing we have here, either, listen, either way, we are burning, either way. You no, say Tesla has got the biggest electric farm. Here's the difference, here's the difference. The difference is somebody's exhaust pipe at my face level in the car in front of me when I'm stuck in traffic, my tailpipe in the face level of the vehicle behind me, and so on. We pass it on right directly in front of us when it could all be 20, 30 miles away where, yes, it does go into the environment, but people aren't directly getting it right in their faces like they do in all of our <laughs> cities now. Every single city has the same exact problem, especially in India. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can I, can I say something? You are, you are, yeah. such, a, so you are such a good cash foundation knowledge seeker, Mr. De Kraman. Can you can you Can you make us a gas filter for the exhaust of the pipe that we can get in CO2 and benefit by them, please. Hmm. Well, that, that would be a good way to do it, maybe. Uh, we should have uh, Gan, Gans maker uh, uh, exhaust muffler. Exhaust know. pipes. Uh, I yeah. think this was in the old USB stick, was this not? Yeah. Could, Nobody has done it yet. Because it's not well, possible. That, that could be a great product from the Cash Foundation Canada, perhaps. that could. Well, well KF awful. Philippines was uh, doing some testing of running exhaust through. Uh, That's right. CO2 there was a good plasma, and it was coming out clean. Uh, Rick, I'd like to place an order for a plasma muffler. There you go, Rick. Plasma Who was doing it? I, I thought, well, I thought... Um, KF Philippines team was doing that. Rene. Rene. There was, Rene yeah, Rene. I don't think it was a... There is a lot of happening. We will we'll, we'll tell you in the future there is a lot happening. It doesn't go into the plasma state. It's much effective through another part of the technology. It will be launched in next year or two. But as we're setting up the factories, other factories are getting coming online as products will be there. It's in one of the patterns. I'm so global warming can generate such good discussions, you know? <laughs> Everything does have cash around this. <laughs> well, it brings up the passion. This is, this is the good thing about the Tuesday afternoons. It's a free trying to get the member of the Universal Council, Earth Council, and the goal, what do you call it, the core team to find solutions. We are here to find solutions and say yes. I am present, but this time the present has to become a present yes. as a gift. We have to give a gift to mankind. Can I ask questions, Cash? Uh, depends. I, I told you this is not my session. This is a few. Okay, 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 okay. I, I will go to the other way. I wish from Caroline or all members that Mr. Cash answer my question. Okay. Your wish, I don't know if he's here <laughs> present or not. Jalal. <laughs> don't forget, I'm a member of the core team and a member of the Earth Council, so either way, I'm here. <laughs> okay. So, do you hear about this one, this uh, new operation, this uh, medical operation to uh, uh, implant it uh, head in the body? What? They implanted a head in a new, uh, another body. Did you hear about that? No. Head transplant. <clears throat> yeah. No, I haven't heard about it. No. And uh, they they uh, already wrote about it. They uh, succeed with it. I don't. I haven't heard about it. No. Hmm. Okay. I don't listen to these things. I, I'm away. I just read, hear about the news when they send it to me. I don't want to look for it. 
Yeah, I'm so we are we are so underprivileged. We are, we don't have anything. We don't have a television. We don't have a radio. We don't listen to these things. And somebody said to me, Mr. Kesh, you don't need to listen to the news and the radio because you make the news yourself. But I don't think so. We got to be able to change the position. But um, no, I haven't heard. There are a lot of beautiful sciences coming up. Uh, not everything is us. I, I admire many scientists who are coming up with um, new technologies, new concepts, new understanding. And this, we, we are seeing a huge evolution in the world of science. And it's amazing what some people do. We have to respect them as always. The scientists are messengers of God in this world of science, not the soul. And anything, anything which makes life easy or makes life pleasant or livable for the others, anyone who does it, we have to have respect for. Thank what you'll do, what the, what's the idea behind it, what you, what you inspire from it, we might not see now, but in the future, all the scientists are always. I have one of the most top scientists in the world, right sitting opposite to me, and nobody knows. Now you know, you all know, but you don't know who it is. I have to go. Thank you very much for today. I, I got to leave. I got a lot of things to do. Right? And uh, please bring the Tuesday afternoons to a position of decision making for or helping in the in the world of. Uh, man for peace and that's that's the whole purpose we brought the Tuesdays in not just to wishes but for us to understand that we can give from our soul to them and we can change it and we can bring a change about um, and I thank all of you who stand and you give from your soul that we achieve uh, um, at least a position in respect to the peace in the Middle East we see the new move from all you just understood. I will see where we go. And we are we are heading and we're taking a lot of um, steps to make sure one way or another we achieve peace somewhere with it and then it'll, it'll, it'll bounce back into the foundation in a good way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Thank you very much.